Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 19 July 2020. I am Sagan Nandi. I used to work in information technology. I have retired now swing trading stocks using the Q systems and techniques that I developed. You may contact me using my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com. I regularly share live stock and market analysis on my traders forum sagarnandi.com, YouTube channel Trading Profitably and Twitter page Sagarnandi. All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. I am not an investment advisor. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. As usual, I will look at oil and gold and then look at the market, sectors, industries and stocks completing the 360 degrees analysis to look for potential trades. What are the systems I use for technical analysis? Charting and scanning, I use Q Elite running on Trace Station and Q Global Q Finder running on Metastock. For stock fundamental and peer analysis, I use Q Vital. For sector industry rotation analysis, I use Q Edge. And for market level index analysis, I use Q Index. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. Let me highlight the new menu options on my traders forum, saganandi.com. As usual, you may access my Twitter page and YouTube channel using the Twitter and YouTube icons. If you want to know the Q systems and their underlying platforms, the Q tools, you can click on the tool icon. The Q standard trade checklist, the unambiguous checklist that you may use to take trend following, trend reversal, bounce, etc. trades, you may access those checklists using the checklist icon. You may use the book icon to download all the books on Q systems and techniques. The graduates icon provide learning guideline for new Q traders. The download link provides beta releases and emergency patch releases. It is not for the generally available releases that you have subscribed to. For that you may log into your personalized page, the green computer icon. You may download the general releases from there and you may also set your computer IDs to authorize the computers for use of Q systems. You may follow the email link to email me. The last icon is for Zoom meeting. It is for one to one meeting that I may conduct from time to time with Q traders and it is also for the graduates club meetings. The meetings of the Q traders who share their trade ideas under this category Q traders stock picks. We tend to meet once every week. Let me now begin with the commodities analysis. I am beginning with oil ETF USO looking at it using the at a glance weekly daily chart template of Q Global running on Metastock. Last week in the weekly market roundup I mentioned that oil was moving in an extremely narrow range and I was not going to take any directional trade until it could break out in either direction. That comment is valid this week also. The weekly backdrop color is continuing to be bullish. However, because of the very narrow range in the daily chart, I am not inclined to take any trade in USO right now. 
gold ETF GLD in the last market roundup I showed the bearish headwind reversal signal in the daily chart however mentioned that because there was a daily memory support line there was no need to exit any existing long position that was useful because the memory support line is holding in the weekly chart price tried to go to the memory support line however it reversed from there and ended the week with a very bullish shape and bullish backdrop color looking at weekly and daily together gold seems bullish however because it is close to the upper boundary line in the daily chart I'm not going to take any new long trade right now after the commodities I am continuing with the market level analysis first let me analyze the market ETFs SPY, QQ, DIA and IWM using both weekly interval and also daily interval for that I am using Q Elite running on trade station if you look at the Q signals most of the signals are bullish except some bearish false moves that came in the market ETFs earlier QQQ used to be the strongest ETF however this week it is the weakest that is the only ETF that dropped for the week not by a big percentage by minus 1.7 percentage whereas IWM became the best performer for the week it went up by 3.7 percentage DIA and IWM displayed bullish flow in the weekly chart SPY broke out of memory resistance in the weekly chart what about the daily charts that is Friday signal both SPY and QQQ touched memory support the signals are looking bullish you may note that SPY and QQQ are at price extreme high not so for DIA and IWM let's look at the ETFs using Q charts now QQQ using at a glance template the weekly backdrop color turned neutral the shape is also indecisive price fell this week you may notice that from the red color in the activity bar in the daily chart price is still in an uptrend price is supported by multiple memory trend line support on Friday it touched the memory support and went up from there Friday's candle is looking bullish though the weekly candle is looking indecisive SPY like QQQ it also touched the memory support on Friday Friday ended with a bullish shape candle and unlike QQQ the weekly candle is also looking very bullish both in shape and in color and it also successfully broke above the memory resistance line SPY is looking bullish both in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart Daya in the YouTube live session that I conducted on Thursday I mentioned that Daya had a memory resistance in the weekly chart and it may find it difficult to break above the memory resistance that came true it tried to go above the memory resistance but precisely tilted down from there resulting in an indecisive shape candle in the weekly chart the backdrop color is bullish 
in the daily also price hit the memory resistance and precisely tilted down from there though not much if next week price can break above the memory resistance in the daily chart then you may look for a buying opportunity IWM this is the best performer this week I mentioned about its weekly memory resistance also in the Thursday's YouTube live session and as I anticipated price could not break above that however the weekly candle is looking bullish both in shape and color probably it will make an attempt to break the weekly memory resistance next week in the daily chart three days ago it open with a gap up and prices holding steady at that level it seems more likely for IWM to go up from here if it does that then you may look for buying opportunity in small cap stocks the market level is looking overall bullish However, you may be cautious because of the memory trend line resistances in the weekly charts of IWM and DIA. Let's see what we can find from the sector level analysis. I'm going to use a series of charts for that and I created all these charts using QH, the real time sector industry rotation analysis tool. This is a picture of the current week one day performance of the 11 sectors that is Friday's performance seven of the sectors were up and four were down one of the down sectors was communication services it was probably pulled down by Netflix financials was also down on Friday later on I will show using QH top down analysis that this decline was due to a large number of regional banks dropping on Friday. You may be cautious about holding regional banks looking at those drops from QH. Energy also dropped on Friday. However, we saw from the USO at a glance charts that it is holding steady. Oil is moving in a very narrow range. This may not be the time to take any trade in energy stocks, neither in the long direction nor in the short direction. Utilities was the best performer on Friday. And using real time top down analysis, I had shared one trading opportunity in utilities. I will review that trade idea later. From sector analysis, let me divert a bit to Netflix. Netflix fell on Friday after earnings. However, when I looked at it during the market hours around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I saw that Netflix had weekly memory support line and in the fine tune 10 minute chart, price was holding above the early range low and the traffic light candle color turned green. Looking at that, I hinted that Netflix might not go down further for the day. What happened after that? This is the same Netflix as of Friday's close. The weekly memory trend line support held. And from the time when I shared the tweet, price could not go down any further this shows the usefulness of the memory trend lines as well as the intraday pivot levels once more back to sector performance analysis this is looking at the sector performance across one day period two day period and five day period we saw on Friday seven sectors were up, four were down. Over two days, Thursday and Friday, it was mixed. Six sectors were 
up and five were down. However, for the whole week, all the sectors are up and they are up by significant percentages. That shows that overall the sector was bullish. There is no doubt about that. If we take a step back, then the sector picture is even more bullish. Over 5 days, 11 sectors are up. Over 10 days, 9 are up and 2 are down. Over 1 month, 8 sectors are up and 3 are down. If we look a bit closer, we see that 8 of the 11 sectors, that is communication services, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, healthcare, industrials, infotech, materials and utilities. All of these eight sectors are up over all the three review periods. Five days, ten days and one month. And the sectors that are not up for all the three review periods, they also turned up this week. That is real estate, financials and energy. That is showing a bullish picture at the sector level, not only for this week, but over two weeks as well as over one month. For several weeks, I have been talking about up-down, up-down move at the sector level and that is continuing. I will demonstrate that using this series of sector comparison charts week to week sector comparison charts. These charts compare the current week's performance with previous week's performance. The red bars represent current week's move and green bars previous week's move. This is a chart from three weeks ago. At that time all the sectors turned down, it turned bearish and one week ago it was bullish. This is a picture from three weeks ago. What happened after that? This is picture from two weeks ago. That time from a bearish picture sectors turned bullish. Most of the sectors went up. The red bars came to the right of the zero line. That was two weeks ago. What happened after that? This is a picture from one week ago. That time Sectors turned from bullish, the green bars of one week ago, and then it turned bearish, from bullish to bearish. This is what I shared in the previous market roundup. Looking at the up-down, up-down move, the expectation was that this week would be bullish. Isn't that what happened? This is the same sector comparison, week to week sector comparison. This chart is from the current week and all the sectors went up. The sectors turned bullish. This series of charts is showing that the up down up down move at the sector level is continuing. If it continues next week then we may expect a down move in the coming week. That may align with the memory resistance lines in IWM and DIA weekly charts. You may keep an eye for that. Now let's have a look at the market using QFinder. What is QFinder? QFinder is a way to look at all the Q signals, bearish signals as well as bullish signals that are showing up on a large list of stocks. That list has more than 1000 stocks and it can show the signals across different intervals. I ran the two finder scans that are available in Q Global running on Metastock. I ran them both on the daily and weekly interval and let's have a look at them. This is the 
weekly finder chart it shows all the q signals both bearish and bullish signals across thousand plus stocks using the weekly interval you can see that 91 percent of the symbols and 93 percent of the q signals are bullish if you look at the different categories strength signals are clearly more bullish than bearish trend continuation signals again undoubtedly more bullish than bearish and even reversal signals are more bullish than bearish at the weekly level the picture is very bullish what about the daily level this is the finder picture for Friday this is still bullish 61% of the symbols and 63% of the signals are bullish strength signals are clearly more bullish reversal signals are more bearish than bullish that is probably expected because we saw that both DIA and IWM reversed from the weekly memory resistance line however the continuation signals are overall more bullish than bearish when you combine the Friday's picture with the weekly picture we have to say that overall the finder is showing a bullish picture the same conclusion that we arrived from the sector analysis Time to make a call on my market outlook and prefer trading direction. My market outlook is bullish. The weekly sector picture is very bullish. Weekly finder picture is very bullish. QQQ and SPY both found support at daily memory support trend lines. SPY broke out of weekly memory resistance trend lines. That is why my market outlook I am keeping bullish. What about preferred trading direction? There I am a little bit more cautious. Why? Because both IWM and DIA they have weekly memory resistance lines. That is one reason to be cautious and also sector level up down up down move is continuing this week the sectors were bullish all of the sectors went up if the up down up down move continues then next week the sectors may come down that is the second reason to be cautious that is why i am keeping an open eye about my preferred trading direction if the iwm and dia memory levels can be broken to the upside then I will take long trades and if the resistances hold then I may avoid taking long trades. Q traders look at the individual Q signals and combine them together to identify trading opportunities and they are probably able to trade a little bit ahead of others and yet they can trade with high success rate blue was an example in the weekly chart the memory resistance was already there price tried to go above that this week and reversed and next week it tried again and reversed that is the current week the current week is also displaying a bearish headwind possible reversal signal are you going to short now you could think of that however i could short it probably well ahead of others in the daily chart also i noticed that there was a bearish headwind signal that came right after this earnings pop then there was a memory resistance line i shared the possible shorting idea on this day then I noticed price went up, broke above the memory resistance, but reversed sharply. 
on this day using Q fine tune chart I shorted it near the very top and since then price has rapidly come down more than risk distance has been covered and if you took the short trade you could book at least partial profit and continue to hold partial position how could you know about the stock you could of course do your own analysis using the same q systems that i use you could also keep an eye on my traders forum sagarnandi.com where i shared the trade idea on glue 70 days ago well ahead of others if you have not subscribed yet you may subscribe to this forum you just need a valid email id and then you may follow the categories of your interest if you want to follow my trading ideas then you may go to the category sagarnandi stock picks and click this follow button i also suggest that you follow this category q traders stock picks where several other q traders are sharing their ideas if you follow these categories then whenever either myself or any of the other q traders post a trading idea you will be notified you may do your own due diligence and decide whether to take those trades or not on my traders forum on friday i share a trading ideas buy setup on aes shared it on friday during market hours using the 100 percent real time systems using simple clicks you may look at the forum but let me demonstrate how i found the trading idea using live queue system this is q edge the real time sector industry rotation analysis tool the home page shows the market view sector advanced decline industry advanced decline and stock advanced decline for one day two day and five day periods during market hours this one day will represent real time advanced decline market depth you may also see the sectors using bar charts across one day two day and five day again during market hours one day will represent real time performance i saw this to be pretty bullish on friday looking at the overall weekly picture and then friday's picture then i click the sector icon to drill down from the home page to the sector level i double clicked on the one day column in fact during market hours i use the real time column that data has now become one day performance and i saw utilities was the best performing sector i drill down into the industries by clicking the cog icon the industries icon that gave me all the utilities industries again i sorted by one day performance and i found independent power producers and energy traders to be the best performing industry in utility sector i drill down into the underlying stocks using the pr button family button and i found aes this stock has excellent valuation undervalued stock shown by cyan color undervaluation column and it is also having positive and increasing earnings growth the stock is up by more than five percent on friday i could identify this stock during market hours itself only one stock is appearing here however i could do a complete peer analysis i can keep my cursor anywhere on the stock row and click this orange color Q vital fundamental and peer analysis link 
I did that on Friday and that took me to QVita. I used AES as the root stock. The stock was automatically transferred from QH to QVital, this tool. It retrieved all the 40 peer stocks. Remember QH had only one stock in this industry because QH contains the S&P 1500 stocks. But using QVital, I could carry out a complete peer analysis tool and that gave me 40 stocks in the same industry. We already saw from QH that the stock is undervalued and it has positive and increasing earnings growth. From the snapshot, you could also see that over one day, that is Friday, over two days, five days and ten days, the stock is steadily going up. It has a decent dividend yield of 3.6% and EPS is positive showing that the company is making money. Another important piece of information is this pie chart that is showing on Friday 97% of the 40 PR stocks were up. Showing that the industry was not strong only because of AES but almost all the stocks in this industry was going up. What about its charts? You could click the chart icon from QVital or you could click that from QEdge also. That would open the chart in Q Global on Metastock or you could also open it on Q Elite running on Tristation. Here I used Q Global running on Metastock and using the standard weekly daily at a glance template you would instantly know as I did that weekly was very bullish. Price was supported by memory support line. Backdrop color was bullish in the weekly chart. Shape was bullish. Daily was supported by memory support line. On Friday, it gave a bullish flow candle. That is the optimal entry point for a trend following stock. It regained the white direction line at it created a reversal candle on Friday. Price went up with higher than usual activity. The technicals were giving a low risk buy point. The industry was the strongest industry in the strongest sector and the stock was undervalued with increasing earnings growth. That completed my 360 degrees analysis and I could carry out this complete analysis using unambiguous signals, color coded signals in a matter of literally seconds. I took less than one minute to identify the trade and I took a long position in the trade already. Afterwards, I shared it in the traders forum. That is the complete 360 degrees analysis that I carry out before I take any trade. Lastly, let me spend a few minutes to explain why I suggested caution on regional banks. From QH, I saw 7 sectors were up and 4 were down on Friday. I drill down into the sectors, sorted the performance by one day and found financials to be the second worst performing sector. I drill down to the underlying industries and when you drill down from sector to the industries, the stock tab automatically selects only stocks from that sector from different industries but from that sector from where you drill down that is the financial sector in this case. I sorted the stocks by one day performance. On Friday I saw that the worst performing financial stocks large number of them were in regional banks industry. That is why I suggested caution about holding regional banks now. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.